الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة وسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد ابن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Welcome again to our twentieth lesson uh, from our classes from the text Al Akhlaq Al Adudiya, written by the great Imam Qadi Al Qudat. Abdul Rahman bin Ahmed bin Abdul Ghaffar al Iji, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, wa Nafa'ana bihi fid Darain. We are continuing in this book, as you know, and this is a book which covers the akhlaq, or what we call the virtues, as well as a discussion on the vices, or what we call in the Arabic, or what we call the radha'il. So, we are up to the section on the book which covers the sub virtues of courage or what we call the shu'ab of ash-shaja'a and we know we've covered this before that courage has 11 sub virtues and just taking a step back we know that courage is the virtue of which faculty of the soul the faculty of anger so someone who has a balanced anger as in not too much anger and not too little anger this will result in the virtue of courage and remember courage is a habit so what and what we mean by a habit is that it's something that comes naturally it's not something which somebody has to think about and then they act in that way right when something is a virtue when we say that courage is a virtue when we say that courage is a fadila it is something that either they have given to them by Allah at birth or something which they have habituated themselves into so through spiritual practice through worship through various things that they can do to habituate themselves into this virtue of courage this is what we mean when we say that someone has the habit or the virtue of courage now coming out of the virtue of courage we've mentioned are uh, 11 sub virtues the first, just to, just to take a step back and revise a little bit, the first is the uh, virtue of greatness of soul, kibrun nafs. What is that? That is essentially a virtue in which someone very naturally always sees the dunya as insignificant. Right? The Imam uh, Adud al-Din al-Iji, he defines it as regarding scarcity and prosperity, as in poverty and wealth, superiority and inferiority, as in someone who's famous, someone who's not so famous, someone with the virtue of greatness of soul, someone who is kabirun nafs, they will, they will not, con not consider these things as that important. These are insignificant matters. Why? Because these are matters of the dunya. Rather, they would be more concerned with Allah. They would rather be, be concerned with the akhirah. They would rather be more concerned with the virtues, becoming someone who is uh, of the makarim al-akhlaq, someone of noble virtue. So these are what would be important to someone who, is, who has a great soul, someone who is kabirun nafs. So that's the, that is the first, uh, as a quick summary, the first sub-virtue of courage. And as you can tell, that takes, you know, that, that takes, um, that takes a balanced uh, faculty of anger. Why is that? Because the faculty of anger which Allah has created within our souls has a purpose. What is that? The purpose is to push away harm. It's so that we protect ourselves. And at the same time is to seek, uh, to seek for things in the world which are of benefit. For example, to seek a certain level of wealth. Um, and this is where the question is, what is a virtuous level of wealth? Well, the science of fiqh will tell us what that is. And that is essentially an amount of wealth which we can support ourselves, we can support our families, we can pay back our debts. And anything beyond that, right? Anything beyond that, now we need to be careful. We can't be seeking that with the intention to show off. We can't be seeking that with the intention to gather matters of the dunya. These, are, these become blameworthy intentions. So, so there's, a, there's always a strong link between akhlaq, good character, as well as fiqh. Because remember, akhlaq is all about having that balance. That balance between 
uh, excess, too much of something, and the balance between having too little of something. So akhlaq is always that, that, that uh, balance between the two extremes. وَخَيْرُ الْأُمُورِ أَوْصَوْتُهَا And the best of matters are the, uh, are the golden means. So, so, that's, so we were speaking about the, the purpose of the, the faculty of anger. So, so a, balanced, right, a balanced faculty of anger will cause us to know okay, the dunya is, is, is insignificant. But, at, but rather, at the same time, there is some of the dunya which we need to acquire such that we can fulfill our obligations as, di as dictated by the sharia. Ah. So it's that, it's that interesting balance between not leaving the dunya entirely because what would, oh, what would that cause? That would cause, uh, that would cause a blameworthy sort of poverty an inability to fulfill our obligations to our family. So that's, that would be a vice of deficiency. And then you all, but you also have a vice of excess where someone desires the dunya too much. And someone of greatness of soul will have that correct balance in that, in that day, they consider the dunya as ins insignificant and engaged with it to the extent that it aids them in the akhirah. So that's, the, that's really the, uh, we can say, the first sub-virtue of courage. And it's a really, it sends a really clear message of the place of the dunya in the life of the person of virtue. Now a branch of that, a branch of that virtue is uh, so a branch of greatness of soul. What is the second? What is the second virtue of uh, courage, which also happens to be a branch out of uh, greatness of soul? So remember, there's uh, the we did mention that courage has eleven sub virtues, but these are not just a list of eleven sub virtues. These sub virtues build on one another. So. We, did, we mentioned the first sub-virtue, which is greatness of soul, which is considering the dunya as insignificant. What grows out of that is what we call high-mindedness, or, or, or idham al-himma, namely being unconcerned about this world's felicity and misery. So, so this, this link is clear, right? Because when someone sees the dunya as insignificant, and recognizes at the same time, you know, the dunya is something insignificant, it comes and goes. Essentially, what is really truly of significance is the akhirah. And that is going to be that which truly lasts. So the, so the difficulties that you face, right, in this, in the, in the, as, as an individual, the difficulties that you face will be within this greater perspective of the insignificance of the dunya and the great significance of the akhirah naturally the uh, the miseries that someone will face in the dunya even the, even the great you know even happiness in this dunya they'll take it you know as in they, they won't be they won't be too concerned about it they would rather they'll be concerned about greater things what would they be concerned about they'd be concerned about felicity or sa'ada fil akhirah right they would be more concerned about happiness uh, felicity uh, flourishing in the in the akhirah. So this is the second uh, sub virtue of courage: high mindedness. Someone being unconcerned, not too concerned about uh, the world's felicity and misery. And once again, whenever remember, just to remind ourselves, when we're speaking about virtues, we always think of these things as being habits. Right? It's not just once off. Someone who has the virtue of high mindedness, they'll be, they would come to this automatically. But once again, remember, this is a process. It's a process of spiritual struggle. A process of, in, 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 uh, we can say in, in uh, using the language of modern psychology, part of it is having the right thought patterns. Having, so for example, someone, you know, some, someone might be faced with a great, you know, they might get, Allahu Alam, like a pay rise or something. Right? A pay rise at work. They get really happy. But, at that point in time, they need to habituate themselves to remember, okay, this wealth has come to me, this is rizq from Allah, right? And it's part, of, it's part of the dunya. So in and of itself, it's not that important, but what do I do with it, right? How do I respond? How do I, how do I use 
this wealth to fulfill my obligations according to the Sharia. Right? So we want to always get into these thought patterns, thinking about thinking about the dunya in the in the right way and habituating ourselves into the right thinking. Now, okay, so now what's the third sub virtue of courage? It is patience. This is sabr or as sabat. This this grows out of the ulama mentioned this grows out of greatness of soul. So someone with a proper with a proper um, uh, someone with a proper uh, understanding of the dunya will have sabr. But what do we mean by sabr here? It's the power to resist sufferings and terrors. It's kind as you can see it's, it's quite similar to high mindedness, right? So if so if someone is being trialed we see by something very difficult, let's say a, a, uh, a loss of a uh, family member. This is a, f this is a form of shaqawa uh, fi dunya. It's a form of difficulty, misery in the dunya. But, once again, if someone understands the nature of the dunya and what it really is, right, it's in the essence, it's a test from Allah. So with that deep understanding of the nature of the dunya, then we very easily, it aids us Right? It's, not, once again, it's not easy, but it aids us to resist these sufferings. It aids us to resist these difficult matters because we know in the end that these tests have meaning. So when we are faced with, with difficult uh, trials in our lives, we can have thabat, we can have steadfastness, we can have patience, we can continue to do what we have to do. And what is that essentially? A ta'a, obedience to Allah. So sabr which takes that effort, right? We're not, once again, we don't want to understand sabr as a passive virtue. Someone just sits back and just takes life. Anyway, it just comes and they just sit and they do nothing. No, we're not, this, is not, this is not the virtue of patience. The virtue of patience is that when someone is faced with a difficulty, things which they really desire in this world, it could be good things, but perhaps it's been taken away from them, but they know that this is a test, so they Continue with worship of Allah, which is what Allah wants them to do. And this is, and if and if this becomes a habit, if this becomes automatic through a lot of spiritual struggle, this becomes the virtue of patience. Then coming out of patience are three, are three sub virtues: bravery, forbearance, and calmness. What is bravery? Bravery is, namely, the absence of distress during fearful situations. So fear is an absolutely normal uh, emotion. So when, when we are speaking about bravery, we never speak about bravery in terms of the getting rid of fear. Right? Because fear will always be there. It's a natural, it's, it's, part of, it's part of the faculty of anger which Allah has created within us. Something comes to us to harm us, then you know, even modern psychology speaks about this. We have the, the, uh, the fight or flight, right? As in, if something dangerous comes to us, and we and then and then the the and we feel afraid, then at that point, perhaps the best thing to do would be to run away, right? This fear tells us to run away because we have to uh, protect uh, protect our, ourselves. So this is a natural blessing Allah has created within us. But sometimes, in fearful situations, what do you have to do? You actually have to remain calm. We have to resist distress. We have to resist panic. We have to resist these things because a particular fearful situation might require us to to be in that you know in that state of calmness. So this is what the ulama of akhlaq what they call bravery. The absence of distress during uh, during fearful situations. And this grows out of patience. Why? Because Remember, what did we say? Patience was the, was, was the power to resist suffering. Uh, one moment. Sorry. Have fun. Um, so, so we, were, we were speaking about bravery was the um, was the virtue to, to resist fear during fearful situations. Um, 
Yes, and we, what we were saying, we were saying that this grows out of uh, patience. How does that? How do we understand that? We understand that because someone who is patient has this malaka, has this habit to resist sufferings and terrors. So they have. So Allah has given them this gift, has given them this habit, this this malaka, this faculty, and as a result of, of that, they can to some extent uh, trust. They can, can to some extent rely on that uh, gift that Allah has given them. And that would give them this, this, this ability to remain calm during fearful situations. So that, so that was, the, uh, that was the, the virtue of bravery. Then on the fifth, the fifth sub-virtue is the sub-virtue of forbearance. And what is this? What does Adud uh, al-Din al-Iji, how does he define this? He names this as remaining composed when filled with rage. Remember what did we say? When someone, when someone is faced with a situation which could harm them, the natural emotions could either be fear and to, and to, to have the ability to resist that fear, we call that bravery. But the second emotion could be anger or rage. But the ability to remain composed, right? the ability to remain composed and act in the right way when angry or when filled with rage, this is what we call al-hilm, this is what we call forbearance. So these are two branches of the, the faculty of patience. Now comes to the sixth uh, virtue, which is the sixth sub-virtue of, um, of courage, which is the the virtue of calmness, or at-ta'anni, or, or often it is as-sukun, as-sukun. So how does Imam, Imam al-Iji define this? He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He says, as-sukunu at-ta'anni fil khusumati wal hurub. So the sixth is calmness, namely deliberateness during hostilities and wars. So clearly, someone who is in a very difficult situation such as, there's a reason why he mentions uh, hostilities and wars because these are the most difficult situations for someone to remain calm when someone is in, uh, what, what do we mean by hostilities? We, we mean perhaps in arguments, right? or disputes over matters and the greatest forms of dispute which can result in death is, would be wars so these, these great, these great uh, uh, situations, very difficult situations Someone with the virtue of calmness or as sukun would be deliberate during these times. And what do we what do we mean by deliberateness? Deliberateness is the opposite of al ajala or haste. So let's and we we remind ourselves of a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in which he says, "At the anni min Allah wa al ajala tu min al shaytan." Right? We have. Slowness and deliberateness is from Allah. Doing things slowly, taking our time, taking the due diligence, this is from Allah. This is, this is what results in good action, virtuous action. As opposed to haste, right? doing things quickly, doing things in a hurried way is from shaitan. What does it mean for it to be from shaitan? It means that it's one of the, do one of the doors of shaitan to your heart. So whenever you feel like, okay, I have to get this thing done. Right, you start. You start to, you start to feel that okay. There's not enough time to do these things. Then, in and of itself, that's not a bad thing. But you, we have to be careful now, right? Are we doing it? Are we doing things in the right way? A, perf a, a very, a very, very straightforward example is wudu, right? When we study our fiqh, we know we have particular uh, actions, the faraid of wudu, the arkan, the pillars. And then we have the sunan, the things that we should do. And to leave it out is blameworthy. And then we have the mustahabbat. There's levels of our, our perfection in wudu. But as you can see, it's clearly if someone is in a hurry, right? And they're in haste, they might miss out a mustahab act. And then, you know, what, 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 what's an example of that? In the, uh, in, the, in the Hanafi school, it could be reciting particular dua or reciting salawat in our, in our wudu. Right? Someone who's in a hurry, hurried, act doing wudu in a hurried way, they're going to be leaving these things out. And even worse, someone who would 
let's say someone who's really hurried, right? Uh, they might miss out, let's say they might not wash their limbs three times, they might just wash it twice or once. But once again here, I'm not talking about, because sometimes people might have a valid reason to be missing out on these, uh, on these, um, uh, on these sunan. I'm not talking about those, I'm talking about situations where someone is, is in a hurry, right? But it's not a good reason to miss out on the sunan. And uh, what, 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 what could be an example for that? That could be an example where um, someone, yes, you know, uh, maybe someone is, uh, someone is watching a show on television or someone is like playing a game on the, com on the Xbox and then they know that, okay, I need to pray and I need to do my wudu. But if I stay too far away from my game or my television show, then I'm going to miss out on, on things, right? So this is not obviously, this, you know, this is all, these are all whisperings from the shaitan to tell us to hurry, hurry, hurry in our, in our ibadat. So this, is, so this is what we mean when we say that al-ajala min shaitan So there are things that come in our lives that tell us to hurry, but then we have to watch out, right? Is, this, is the shaitan going to be using these, these points to tell us to, to, uh, to, do the, to do the wrong thing? Or maybe not the wrong thing, but to do things which are not you know, not uh, according to the to the Sharia, and this can follow through from from salat, you know, you know, doing salat in, in a quick way, and beyond our ibadat, right? As in examples could be community projects. Someone is engaged in a community project, and then but but they hurried. Why? Because let's say let's say the the you know, as in they have some reason where they have to be really quick. Once again, we're not talking about those reasons where you, have, where you are forced to be quick. Right? These are things out of our control, but things which are within our control, but we just choose to do them in a hasty way. And this can, you know, this can result in, uh, in, uh, in negative effects to, to, uh, to community projects. So, 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 so back, back to the main discussion, we were speaking about a sukun. What is a sukun? Deliberateness during hostilities and war. So, so, so the, the, the commentators of the text, they continue and they, and, uh, and they speak about one of the greatest, greatest points where a sukun is very important, which we mentioned before, which is, which is in war. So a verse is mentioned here, in which Allah says, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, wa qatilu fi sabil Allah al-ladhin yuqatilunakum, wa la ta'atadu inna Allah la yuhibbu al-mu'atadin." And this is uh, the verse 190 from Surah Al-Baqarah, which is the verse which was revealed at that point in Medina when uh, when the permission to when the permission to wage war against uh, to wage war against those who were, who were uh, outwardly aggressive against the, the Muslims, those who were outwardly oppressing the Muslims during those first 13 years in Mecca. So this is, a, this is a huge watershed moment in the history of the Muslims. Let's translate the verse. It says here, fight in the cause of Allah only against those who wage war against you. So this is a clear verse permitting, uh, permitting uh, uh, battle and, uh, and, and aggression against those who have transgressed, transgressed against the Muslims. But how does the verse continue? It says, but do not exceed the limits. Surely Allah does not like transgressors. So this puts an upper limit. I remember when we speak about, when we speak about a sukun, what are we speaking about? We are speaking about deliberation, doing things in the right way. And remember, it's also related to al-hilm, and a najda it is also related to bravery where someone uh, remains composed and does the right thing when they're afraid and it is also related to al-hilm which someone does the right thing and acts remains composed when they are angry so and this results in the the virtue of a sukun where someone in the very 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 difficult situation of being in battle they do not exceed the limits they, they, uh, they, they use the difficult tool of war, right? War, 
a war is a uh, is a very difficult tool. It, it does it definitely does cause harm. Like no one can doubt that violence and war does cause harm. But at the same time, it is always done for a greater purpose. It is always done for a greater purpose. And in that very difficult situation of war, there is the command from Allah to not exceed the limits. That is the command to Allah to perform war with sukun, to perform war with calmness, to perform war with forbearance, to perform the act of war with, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, bravery. Now, now for us in now for us living in uh, uh, in Australia, you know, how do we how do we learn from such a verse? And that is digging deeper and asking ourselves, okay, what is the purpose of uh, of of jihad in uh, as commanded by Allah in the Quran? And the purpose of that is the ulama they mention they mention nasratu. Kalimatillah, which is to raise the word of Allah, which is to raise the Sharia of Allah, and and part of that, essentially, a lot of what we can do in the in the uh, in Australia is da'wah, is that is that effort of da'wah. But what is what is particularly interesting uh, in the act of jihad is that there is a concept of of uh, of raising Islam and giving it a uh, giving it a uh, political force, and this is a very interesting discussion. Why is that? Because uh, when we live today, today we live in a in Australia, we live in a secular uh, liberal democracy. What does that mean? This means that part of part of the effects of living in such a society is that the individual. The, we can say the personal life and the and the public life. There's a separation. So unfortunately, whenever people think about their actions, they only think about their actions at the personal level. What are my actions? You know, between myself and my family, myself and my work. You know, all of these personal interactions. But what is very very important is that we need to realize that. Uh, that the individual uh, also has the ability uh, to impact the collective, also has the ability to to impact the at the political level, and, uh, and what we need to realize is that we as Muslims have a responsibility to raise the word of Allah not just at the level of uh, individuals, right? Not just between us myself and 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 the and the direct individuals that we deal with but we need to really think about solutions of how to raise the word of Allah at the at the higher level of the community at the higher level of we can say higher levels of social organizations which is levels of we can say we can say the the city for example or the level of the country right so, so th these are very important things to think about. Perhaps we won't speak about it, speak about it in this in this lesson. But inshallah, we'll we'll leave that we'll leave that virtue with us uh, today, which is the virtue of as sukun, which we've translated as calmness, namely the deliberateness during hostilities and war. So, someone who has that virtue, uh, inshallah the virtue of calmness in hostilities and wars will be able to likewise be calm during things which are a lot easier so we'll end here inshallah and may we ask the dua we ask allah that he blesses us with this particular virtue wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam